Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome. Nice to see everyone in the chat. Hello, France. Hello. From all over the place. <laughs> I, I can't even see just how many countries are represented here today, but it's always nice to see everyone. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Happy Thursday or Friday, wherever you are. And uh, today, welcome to Demo Days, and we're going to talk about developer productivity. In this age of measure everything, too often developer productivity gets oversimplified to a few easy to understand but uh, potentially flawed metrics, resulting in kind of a friction between organiz organization leaders and their uh, developer teams. So if you're on a dev team, feel free to put in the chat metrics that have importance in your organization and uh, whether or not you feel it's been effective or ineffective in helping your team understand and improve its productivity. Uh, to flip this discussion on its head, I'd like to introduce you all to my guest for today, Irini, who is a GitHub senior researcher based out of Canada. Irini? Hi. Thank you very much for having me. It's very exciting to be here and with a lot of people from a lot of different places. So that's amazing. Welcome, welcome. I'm super excited to get your perspective on developer productivity. Take it away. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to share a few slides just to like keep us going, um, but also kind of want to have a little bit more free form conversation as well. Um, so let me start by doing that. Okay. So hopefully everybody can see slides at this point. Um, so yes. My name is Irini. I'm a senior researcher at GitHub. I kind of describe what I do as I do research to try to find ways to help developers be more productive, more efficient, happier, healthier. Um, and I get to work on a lot of very cool stuff while I do that. So um, that's the thing that I want to talk about today. Um, it's called the Good Day Project. This is a kind of like an internal experiment we run at GitHub about like six months ago. We wrote it up, so we have shared some of the information um, on the GitHub blog about two months ago, um, and you can find a lot of information there. But I did want to take the time to talk about some of the parts that I think are pretty, pretty cool and pretty important that have to do with a Good Day project. So today I'm gonna talk about what is it that we did, why we did it, um, how it went, and I'm also going to leave you with some takeaways, kind of plant seeds in people's brains and, and like ways that you can use some of the information in your day to day too. Um, so I like to start things with why. Um, so I'm, I'm here saying let's reimagine productivity or like let's rethink it, let's get it right. Um, why are we even doing that? Why are we even talking about developer productivity in the first place? Um, so the reason that we're saying reimagine productivity is because it kind of underlines any organization's success. And it does it in a lot of different ways. Um, I've put some here on the slide and these might represent things that you're thinking about as well. So if you're concerned about making higher quality software or making software faster or um, improving your developers' well-being, their retention, their satisfaction, these are all things that are underlined by developer productivity and we actually find companies that do pay attention to developer productivity and support it well end up doing better. So that's reason number one why we're talking about reimagining productivity is because it's very, very important. Um, unfortunately, reason number two is that important as it is, a lot of the time we kind of get it wrong. And so that's not the place where we want to be. When something is important, we want to make sure we get it right. Um, what do I mean by getting it wrong? Um, you may have seen um, developer productivity or really productivity tracking tools out there. A lot of the times the, um, the approach is an approach that we call kind of like counting beans. Well, we, we, we joke about it being counting beans, but the approach being you do thing X, Y, Z. Um, let's say, for example, you open, you close pull requests, you close tickets, you close issues and so on. And the approach is to count how many of these things you did and call that productivity or to track how much time it took you to do those things and call that productivity. And it turns out that that sort of approach is something that developers kind of hate. 
Um, they find it anxiety inducing. They find that it doesn't really do justice to how multifaceted and complex their work is. Um, they have seen it in the past kind of used against them, that simplification of their work, it doesn't really work in their favor. And to them, it feels a lot like spying, like somebody's watching how much of a thing they're doing or how long it took them to do the thing, and they're capturing information about them from that. Um, so over time, developers have become a little bit suspicious when it comes to productivity, when it comes to productivity tools or productivity tra tracking, we have lost a lot of developer trust um, there. So they've come to kind of distrust the word and distrust the tools that come with it, um, which is unfortunate because at the same time, developers really do care about their productivity. It's just that what they have in mind is slightly different from what the tools are giving them. Um, developers go around and are thinking about their experience of productivity in their day to day. And that's more like thinking about having a good day than anything else. Um, so they definitely want better insight into their work habits and what works for them and what doesn't, what is it that they can change. They are quite a bit data driven and a lot of the time they're also data literate. So they are very much interested in getting numerical information that has to do with um, their habits and what they can change. And they definitely are interested in having more of the good days. They want to be more satisfied with the, the days that they have. And that's a little bit of a gap, right? That's what developers need and want when it comes to productivity. That's not what they're getting from tools and approaches to productivity, they kind of reduce everything to counting beans. And that's where the good Pro the Good Day project came in. We we realized that there's this gap, that there's a lot more that we could be doing to help developers. Um, and we took what we are calling a developer first approach. And what that means is we're going to first make sure that we address the need that developers have and that we know they have. And we're also going to try to avoid you know, known anti patterns and known pitfalls. Um, so that translated into us thinking all the time, what is the right information to surface to developers to help them improve, to help them understand their days and potentially improve them? How can we do that without breaking anything for them, like without disrupting their workflow? And how can we do that while safeguarding and respecting their privacy every step of the way? Because we know that they are suspicious. We know that they are, you know, they 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 kind of distrust productivity and different approaches. How do we make sure we don't repeat the same mistakes, essentially? We did have a, um, an approach um, in mind that we wanted to test. So I'm just going to give a very quick overview of what it is that we did with the Good Day project. We grabbed 40 um, engineers at GitHub. Um, and these are individual contributors. So no managers at this point. We were only in interested in like the individual developers experience. Um, we had 40, 40 people sign up and then for two weeks, every day, at the end of the day, we sent them a two minute survey that we wanted them to fill out. And then we asked them questions about their day, such as, um, how much did they work with others? How much did they help others today? Um, how many breaks they took? How many meetings they had? What was their emotion for the day? So these are all things that are important, that are part of a developer's workday, um, but are never captured in any telemetry, or at least not in any telemetry that we had. But typically, they're not captured um, in an automated way through telemetry. Um, we asked them, the first question we asked in every survey was a very, very simple one, which was, how was your workday? And we gave people options from one, it was terrible, to five, it was awesome. Um, and just by that very simple question and very simple way to answer that question, we were able to classify what type of day this person is having and then start building patterns about these different types of days a person is having. And the information for the, the patterns came from two places, telemetry 
because we had it and of course we're going to use it and also all the information perhaps for me more importantly all the rich information we were getting from the surveys every single day that's what we used we combined that information and we started creating patterns for each person individually and at the end of the two weeks we sent every person their own good day report that had a summary and, and a set of charts and text to help read the charts and see what to get out of them that specifically was tailored to their data, their patterns. This was only applicable to them and they were also the only person that had access to that. Um, that's not the only thing we gave them actually. We also gave them another survey which was a satisfaction survey and I'll talk a little bit about that too because this is all great that we, we took this approach but we were trying to test the approach, um, which means that at the end, we had to assess how we did. So once we gave people their own personalized reports, we also gave them a satisfaction survey because we wanted to see how we did with the whole process we put them through and with um, you know the, the surveys that we gave them every day and with the report that we gave them. In the end, we were interested in kind of seeing how we did along all of these things. Um, I'm going to take a small break like a sidebar because I want also want to talk a little bit about um, how we were thinking about productivity this whole time. Um, and so I'm going to stop sharing my slides. AJ, maybe have you seen any questions that we can that we can answer at this point? You're still in the clear for now. Okay. All right. Well, then I'm going to go back to the slides. Um, okay. So Taking a little bit of a step back, so far, I've been giving information that is mostly, you know, how did we do this, um, which is cool, but it's also, I think, important to have an idea of like, what were we thinking the whole time we were doing this? How did we design this? For example, I mentioned sending people surveys every day. What were the questions in the survey and where did they come from? So what we used here, because we didn't want to go with the current thinking about productivity is activity, we used a new framework of developer productivity called Space. This was published earlier this year by Nicole Forsgren and colleagues from the University of Victoria and from Microsoft Research. Um, and I've put a short link here absolutely encourage everyone to read that. It's a little bit of a, you know, a longer article because it is detailed, but it explains very well the, the kind of thinking that went into creating this framework. So what is space? What is special about it? And why did we choose it? Um, the short answer is we chose it because it's more holistic than any other approach that was available to us. So I mentioned that kind of the pitfall that we we see a lot of the time is like just counting activities, right? Pull requests that are open, pull requests that are closed, or the time to merge a pull request and so on. And it seems to be very restricted to that. Um, but we were thinking, no, no, we need something that is broader so that we can capture a lot more aspects of what goes into developer productivity. So space does that. Um, and it's an acronym. It stands for five things, five dimensions. S is for satisfaction and well-being. P is for performance. A is for activity. C is for communication and collaboration. And E is for efficiency and flow. Um, so already you can see there's a lot more going into it than just activity. Activity is still there, right? It's not nothing, but it's not everything. So there's other, other things that go into it. So I want to say a very, like, a little bit about each dimension so that we make sure that we all understand what goes into it. I'm going to throw some like example metrics that potentially you are looking at or you're interested at or you might want to be interested in capturing um, just as a as an example. And then if people have questions and so on, we can we can get into that, too. So the first dimension of satisfaction and well-being is really about how happy and satisfied and fulfilled developers are with what they're doing. And that can include the work that they're doing, can include the tools that they're using to do their work and so on. Um, this is very important to capture um, because it directly impacts developer productivity. Um, and at the same time, it's very hard to capture this sort of thing. Satisfaction and well-being just doesn't live in telemetry. So it's not automatically grabbed and stored somewhere as information. So 
what ways do we have to get it um, at scale? Really, surveys. You have to ask developers themselves how satisfied they are. You have to ask them questions that capture their way of being. There is no other, currently at least, no other better source of information than the developers themselves. And the way to do that at scale is to collect it through surveys. Um, and then you can start thinking about you know, metrics to capture it. Like for example, any, um, any metric that has to do with employee satisfaction, engagement, retention, burnout, if you can get a sense of that, those would all fall under satisfaction and well-being. You don't have to track all of those. In fact, you don't have to track all of the five dimensions of the space framework. That's another cool thing about it, uh, right? So you don't get overwhelmed. Um, if you track three of the five things, and so you can just have a handful of metrics that capture those, you're you're still going doing a like much better job of just looking at activity. Uh, performance, the, the next dimension is about how well we did. Um, and that's always going to be relative to our goals and what we wanted to, to do well. Um, and, the, and the metrics should be related to the goals. And the goals are your goals, right? Your competitor goals might be completely different. And therefore the metrics that they're using and what their dashboard looks like might be completely different to yours and that's fine. Um, examples for performance. So say your goal is ultimate software quality. You probably want to be thinking something like number of bugs in your code or the absence of bugs in your code. Um, maybe you're thinking more the impact of code rather than the quality of code. And then you might be thinking about metrics such as employee, uh, sorry, customer satisfaction, for example. So just giving examples so that we understand what goes under performance. But the important point there is performance and the metrics that go with it is going to look very different depending on your situation and your organization. Activity, don't feel like we need to say much there just because this is the most common dimension. This is the one that people automatically think about when they think about productivity. So it's count of things, number of tickets, number of closed pull requests and so on. Only thing to point out here is that developers engage in a lot more activities than we think. Um, and so only looking at coding activities might not be giving us the whole picture, right? Um, so think about my favorite example, at least, is, is like doing things like mentorship, which developers do more and more of as they go through their career and they become more senior. And it's an incredibly valuable activity because it makes them better. It makes everyone around them better so that like they benefit, the team benefits, the organization benefits. And yet I don't believe we capture it anywhere or not in any tangible way so that we can say like this person did this much of this activity unless it's a coding activity. Um, communication and collaboration is about um, how teams work together. Um, and that could be, because we have communication here, a lot of the time we're thinking how much our team's communicating and in what channels they're communicating and what's the quality of the communication. But I think we can put a lot more under communication and collaboration because like, for example, how easy is it for um, especially as we're thinking about working in a distributed way or in a remote way, how easy is it for a team to locate the right information or for someone on the team to locate the right person to ask a question to, right? So um, the effectiveness of communication and collaboration is decided on many things. I would put the quality of the documentation, how fresh the documentation is, how easy it is to find documentation and so on. Those are all things that could go um, under this dimension. And finally, efficiency and flow, um, which ended up being, especially with a good day project, we definitely saw it being very um, pervasive for developers and very dominant in, in how important it is for them. Um, efficiency and flow, we can see a couple of ways. We can see it as efficiency in terms of our engineering systems. So how long does it take from something to go through end to end in the engineering system and what part of that time is you know value adding time versus delays or or wait time and so on but we could also be thinking about it in terms of 
uninterrupted time for developers to focus. Um, and it turns out that that's something very precious to them. So that sense state of flow, that state of intense concentration, um, that's something that developers value very much. And so we could be looking at metrics that try to capture the amount of interruption that happens during the day. And some of those you can get automatically, and some of those you have to rely on the developers themselves. So I said a lot, I was planning to say less, but um, hopefully that gives an idea of what these dimensions are, what are example metrics that go under them, and kind of give the holistic view of this framework to explain why we use this um, instead of something else. Um, I mentioned that the cool thing about space is that it is holistic. And I think the benefit of it being holistic is that it lets us bypass a lot of developer productivity myths. Uh, developer productivity, well, productivity itself is a concept that has been around for a very long time. And it has accumulated some baggage. Um, so that means like misconceptions that we have in our heads about what productivity is. So I put some here. We tend to think the productivity is all about developer activity. You already heard me talk about that. We find more and more that activity explains very little um, and, it, and it relates very little to successful outcomes. So if you're looking at a dashboard that only has number of commits or number of PRs that your team or your individual developer is opening and closing and so on, and that's all you look at, that's not gonna tell you if your organization is going to be successful or if you're going to hit your goals for the quarter or anything like that, there's very little relationship between activity and successful outcomes. Um, second myth is that productivity is only about individual performance. Certainly not the case. Um, is Teams are very important. Teams is where software development happens most of the time. Um, those things are linked, individual performance and a team's performance and a, or um, productivity um, and an organization's productivity, these are all linked. They're not entirely the same, but we can't have a productive organization without having productive teams. We can't have productive teams without having productive individuals. So it's all connected and it's not just about one of these things. Um, myth number three, that one productivity metric can tell you everything you need to know. It would be awesome if that was the case. Um, I feel pretty confident that after so many years of research and productivity, not, not just my research, but like the research communities, um, research and productivity, if one metric, like a single metric hasn't surfaced yet, um, it's probably because it doesn't exist. And it makes sense. It's, it's too complex, like software development is so complex of an endeavor. Um, that you can't really reduce it to one metric. It would be awesome, but not, not true. Um, and then productivity me measures are only useful for managers, another thing that we hear quite a bit. Um, we have certainly been thinking or designing tools with managers more in mind. And as I mentioned at the beginning, the managers need when it comes to tracking productivity is not the same as the individual developers needs. Um, so there is this mismatch. And I think that that's kind of what fuels the myth. But um, productivity measures are extremely useful for individual developers too. And they help them self improve and they can improve their well being, they can improve their satisfaction, it can improve their confidence. Um, and it can concretely show them ways to improve. And that's what we also found from the, the Good Day project. Um, Last one, productivity comes down to engineering systems and developer tools. Those are very important, not the most important thing. Um, and let's also remember that this is not where developers spent all of their time. It's not in the developer tools in, in the engineering systems. They're doing other things. A lot of the time they work with design, for example, and so on. So just focusing on the engineering systems and developer tools does not give us the whole picture. Um, at this point, I want to show you something. Um, AJ, I don't know if there are any questions. We can take a pause here. Otherwise, I'm going to switch to something else because I want to show something a little bit more fun. Yeah, we actually do have a good number of questions. Uh, the All first right. one I've got here is from uh, Ukachi Okali. Um, and might be getting ahead of you, but curious as to how the quality of work life has changed for developers at GitHub based on your findings from the data. 
Um, that is a very good question. I don't believe that we have like data to back it up because when we did the project, we were in the thick of it, right? We didn't we didn't have it before and after to to be able to compare. Um, so everything we have collected as information is while we have all been in this difficult situation that we've been in. All right. And then uh, the next question from Manuel Spigolon. Uh, how did you choose the questions for S? Did you have uh, previous survey data? So we designed the survey based on the, the space framework. So we designed new questions in order to capture S. And I'm going to show some of that in the report that I'm about to share. Uh, so perhaps we can, we can take it there. Um, but I think for satisfaction, um, we, we focus more on the well-being, actually, because we wanted to see I think we, we captured the stress level for the day and the number of breaks, I believe, that people took for the day. Those are definitely two that we used for, for S. Hmm. All right. Uh, and the show Black, uh, has a question. Um, how many companies use the space framework and can you exemplify which company and how, how they use it? Or is this something that's still uh, completely brand new? So it, I would consider it brand new. Um, like as a research artifact, it came up like at the beginning of the year. Companies always want to take their time a little bit before they take something else on, something new on. Um, so we do have, I don't believe we can say much and we can share much information, but we do have a few companies that are we're working with that are adopting the framework and we're going to have case studies off to share with everyone. But it's still a little bit early days. Yeah, so it's it's definitely a novel concept. So it's yeah. it's something that requires a lot more exploration. Yeah. Uh, all right, and then finally, uh, for now, John Walsh says that a lot of devs would immediately groan at regular surveys. Do you have any tips or hacks to make this less of an interruption? Do I ever? Um, yes, I do. Um, actually, that was one of the most surprising things that happened with the Good Day project. And I was expecting that people are going to drop off very quickly because we were sending them like daily surveys. And I thought, well, they're just going to give us like three days and then they will be done with it. And we found exactly the opposite. And people actually said that they were going to do it longer than we asked them to. Um, and that's what I'm going to say for now, because the rest I have a, like, I do want to share some like tips and how we did it as I talk about the satisfaction survey. But one thing, I think that we were very mindful about how we shared the survey. We asked, we sent it to people at the end of their day. I actually asked them, what time in your time zone do you want to get the survey to make sure that it's not interrupting their day at all? And it only took two minutes and that combination plus a secret ingredient, which I'm going to reveal next, um, is seem to have done the trick. Nice. Uh, do you happen to have time for one more question? Yeah, let's go for it. All right. So we've got Steve here. It says, have you read Fred Brooks' The Mythical Man Month? Many companies use this as their metric for software development. Yes. And you know, it's a seminal book for a reason. Um, and at the same time, we things have progressed, right? Things have moved on. I, I am aware that a lot of, of companies are using that as their guide. Um, and it is, you know, it's like it, it plays into this concept that I mentioned at the beginning of measuring output and measuring input. Input is usually time, output is usually units of, you know, code in some sense. Um, and that's great, but it's not all of it. Um, and that's what we're trying to say with the space framework, with the Good Day project and so on. We're trying to exemplify, here's how you could be thinking about it in a broad, more broad way, and here's how you could be using it. Nice. Did I? Did uh, I? Ho uh, hopefully that helped a little bit. Yes, indeed. Uh, well, I see questions are still rolling in, but I'm going to hold off on them for a little bit and okay. let you get back. And, and uh, you said that you had something to show us. Yes, yes, I do want to share my screen again. And this time I am going to share something different. All right, so hopefully everybody can see this PDF. I wanted to show you what the report looked like. I gave you all the theory, I gave you all the, you know, how we did the things and so on. I mentioned that at the end of two weeks, we sent each person that participated got their own good day report. Um, so I want to show you what that looked like and what the information was there. 
Um, this is simulated. It's all fake data. So it's not a particular individual's information that you're looking at. Um, so first thing we showed people was a rough breakdown of the types of days that they had, right? They, they had given us 10 days worth of data. So it was five work days uh, times two weeks. And we gave them a rough breakdown of how many of these were good, not so good. So if they said that a day was awesome or good, we counted as good. If they said it was okay, bad or terrible, we counted as not so good. Then we started giving people graphs. And for every chart, we also gave them some, um, some text, some supporting text so that they, they know what they're reading. Um, first graph we, we gave them was really towards kind of the bean counting approach that I was mentioning earlier. So here we have on the horizontal axis, we have the days that they reported. And then at the vertical axis, we have a count, like a, a total of the count of activities that they did each day. So like three issues that they closed, plus five comments that they wrote, plus two PRs that they merged, that sort of thing. I'm oversimplifying, but but really was not much more than that. Um, and so, and, and on that, we have overlaid information of what was the sentiment for each day? Was this the day that they said was good or bad or okay and so on? And we're showing those two together and the text we're asking people to see, are these things moving together or not? Um, because if they are moving together, that means that activity is important for this person, right? It, it seems to be correlated. It seems to be associated with their sentiment every day. Um, if they're not moving in the same direction, which 40 out of 40 people, their bars and, and lines did not move in the same direction, means that activity is not the driver for your days. And this goes together with everything else I've been saying so far. There's, there's definitely a little bit of a theme, right? Activity is not everything. It's not even the most important thing. Um, and and like on the research side of things, maybe we know this for years, but this was our opportunity to actually start educating people and planting seeds in their heads that look, for your data, for your days, activity doesn't seem to be the driver. So if you're going to be focusing on improving something, maybe it's not increasing the amount of things that you do every day. Um, next chart we gave people was a chart based on two questions that we had in the survey. Every day we asked people to say what time of the day they felt most productive and least productive. And we gave them like two hour time windows throughout the day. So like 9 to 11, 11 to 1 and so on. Um, and we plotted what they said. And so a person here, we're asking them to take a look at this chart and say and see are there times of the day that they consistently feel most productive or least productive? Because you can schedule your day to essentially fit your energy levels. Um, if you are most productive in the late afternoon, for example, maybe that's time that you should reserve for tasks that you have that are kind of you know, a higher demand when it comes to energy. Um, if you are low energy or you feel like you're least productive consistently some time of the day, maybe that's a time to have you know, meetings or take a break even. Um, after that, we gave people charts, one chart for every one of the space dimensions. So here we have satisfaction and well-being and yes, I was uh, I was saying that what were the questions that we we were asking in in satisfaction and well-being. So we had the level of stress and the number of breaks that people took. And so this is a chart that has for every day that people reported their if we kind of simplified to low, medium, high, um, their stress level, the the breaks that they took, and their level of activity. We we kind of used activity everywhere because we wanted to show people that not necessarily like related to everything else. The purple bars that you see here, those mean good days. So like immediately we're trying to draw people's attention to do you see patterns? I mean, here they're not patterns necessarily because it's fake data, but do you see patterns repeating on the purple days? Or do you see patterns repeating on not the purple days, honestly, because you know maybe you know what what works for your good days and then you follow that or you know what doesn't work for your not purple days and then you you can continue like you can do things to avoid that um same thing with performance the questions here were about um 
how much progress people felt that they made that day and what's the quality of the work that they did. Um, I'm gonna pause here and I'm gonna say, since people, sorry, just popped into my head. Since people had questions about, well, the questions that we use in the survey, uh, we have all those questions included at the end of our blog post that we wrote for the Good Day Project about a couple of months ago. Um, so like all the questions that we answered, uh, sorry, that we that we were asking people every day, they're there. If you want to be doing this survey for yourself every day, you, you have everything you need. Um, uh, and the same idea, all the days that people reported and low, medium, high of whatever the questions were about that uh, space dimension and then their activity. I'm not gonna go through everything because it all follows the same idea. We're giving people information based on their patterns and theirs alone. We're highlighting what are the days that they said were good and we're prompting them in the text to start looking for patterns that seem to be repeating. I am going to go back to my slides. Now that I showed you that, um, this is what we gave people after two weeks of asking them <laughs> of, of asking them to fill out surveys for us every day. Um, and we also gave them a satisfaction survey um, because we wanted to see how we did with everything. Is there are things from this approach to continue. If we're doing this this experiment again, if we want to scale this experiment, what what did we learn from it? Um, we asked a lot of questions in the satisfaction survey, um, and I would say that the short conclusion is that people really liked this, really loved the Good Day Project, which was awesome to see. Um, I mentioned high response and completion rates for the survey. We had 90%. As a person who has been interviewing and surveying developers for a long time, I never thought I would see that number. Um, and it basically says that unless someone was out of the office that day and they didn't fill the survey for that day, um, all the other days they were very diligent about it and they completed everything. Um, they even said that they were excited to do this every day, to, to fill out the surveys every day. Um, we found that this is something that had value for developers. It helped them meet their goals, and their goals were to start self-reflecting, to understand their own patterns, to identify areas to improve, and ideas, like concrete ideas on what to change moving forward. We found that this was not disruptive to their day, which I feel is part of the success of this, um, that it happened in a way that it didn't disrupt them, it didn't interrupt them uh, during their day, and they didn't share any data privacy concerns. Of course, we had been very diligent about that part because we knew that it, it's, it's an area that is sensitive, uh, so we made sure that we tell developers, those who participated ahead of time, that the research team is the only team or the only individuals that have access to their data. It's not shared with any of their colleagues or their manager or anyone really. We were the only ones that had access to that. Uh, and we made sure that that remained throughout the whole process. And we even had a pretty long consent form where we explained exactly like the lengths that we would go to um, to protect their information. Um, and so it doesn't surprise me that, that we didn't get any signal that they were data privacy concerns. I would say this is one of the top priorities. If someone was to do it again, that's one of the things that you want to make sure that you get right. Um, and so, yes, not disruptive, meets developers' goals, no data privacy concerns. So as far as we're concerned, we definitely hit our goals. We found the information to surface to developers. We didn't break their day. We safeguarded their privacy. So, you know, all goals met. And then we found a couple of things, that's the secret ingredient, that's where that comes in. We found a couple of things that we were not expecting to find. Um, in the satisfaction survey, we asked people how long and how often they would do this, um, given the results that they're getting. And they said that they were glad to do it for twice as long as we asked them. So we asked them to, to fill out surveys for two weeks. They said they would gladly do it for four weeks. Also never thought in my life that I would hear developers say that because I know that they groan at like doing surveys. But there's a reason why they were willing to do it. And that is because they were getting value out of filling out the survey itself. Like, yes, we gave them data and reports and all the cool stuff, 
But in addition to that, they also got benefit just by taking two minutes at the end of the day to reflect on what had happened and fill out that survey. Um, it helped them in two ways, they said. One, it made them more mindful during the day. So they were already thinking they were getting in this habit of self-reflection. So now they were not only reflecting at the end of the day, it actually made them more mindful about what was happening in their day as it was happening. And the second way was um, it helped them was a very clear, tangible way to close out their day. I know that this is a challenge that people have had, especially in the last year and a half, we, a lot of us have been working from home and it's very hard to know where the work day ends and the you know personal time begins and so on. But a lot of people have been talking about this even when we were in the offices that it's, it's hard to disconnect from work. Um, and there are a lot of like really good books and approaches on how like trying to find tangible, vocal, sometimes very clear ways to signal to yourself that the day, the work day is done. Um, and this ended up being one of those things. So people were saying that it was a very clear way. My day is done. I filled out the survey. Now it's me time. Um, and that they found benefits in just just taking those two minutes. So I think that that's the, the secret ingredient. Yes, we tried to not disrupt anyone by sending it at the end of their workday. Um, yes, we kept it very short, just two minutes. And then in addition to that, they seem to get benefit just by doing the self-reflection itself. Um, everything I said so far has been on the individual developer basis. So every individual is getting the data and is giving us their satisfaction and responses. But we also did analysis across the board. We shared that in the blog post as well. Um, and here, we found things that we were kind of expecting to find, but it's good to put numbers on it and be able to talk about it with like something more solid. We found just how important being in that sense, set of um, state of flow and state of concentration is to developers because it can take them from like 82% chance of having a good day if you only have mild interruptions or no interruptions, all the way down to 7% chance of having a good day if you're having interruptions throughout the day. So that efficiency and flow aspect um, and the interruptions they seem to have a huge um, importance for developers. It's, it's a very precious state that they're trying to safeguard. And then uh, we also found just how disruptive meetings can be, or rather too many meetings. Um, we found that if you go from uh, two to three meetings on average per day, it took the chances of like feeling that you made progress from 74 to 14%, so like down 60%, again, huge difference just by going from two to three meetings on average per day. Um, and then the last thing I have here, I was just, I'm just gonna sound like a broken record with the, the daily reflection, but it was, it was eye opening for us as the research team that it had such an impact. And then we found of course, that there's a lot of really good research that has been done in other domains about the value of reflection. There's also work that has happened in like software development that has to do with kind of um, in retrospect, um, looking at the goals you had and the practices you did and revising your work habits and so on. So it seems to be a very persistent theme. I have one more thing I want to show that is kind of cool if we have time for it and if we don't have questions. AJ, how do you want to do this? Yeah, let's go ahead. Uh, show what okay. you want to show. Okay, I will show. Uh, let's see. Yes, I will show. Do you can you see my Slack? Yep. Okay. All right. So what I wanted to show here is like an idea we're playing with because the the Good Day project was like cool and everybody loved it and so on with the 40 people that we had. And it was very, very manual. So it was like me behind the scenes, like writing up emails and sending survey links to people every day and putting things in spreadsheets and so on. And that's fine because like pilots are like that and it's all very manual. But if we want it and, and people want to use it at a larger scale, what do we do then? 
Um, so we partnered with the office of the CTO at GitHub that has an amazing developer experiences team that does awesome work. They build like prototypes of tools that, that are amazing um, and get a lot of value for developers. And we partnered with them and they created a Slack bot for us called the Good Day Slack bot. And they came up with a very simple and very elegant solution about how to do the whole Good Day you know, process. Um, it starts with creating a GitHub repo, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna demo it necessarily because I've set all mine up and I don't want to break it. Um, and I didn't create extra accounts or anything, but I did want to to say a couple of things about the process. Um, this is to be able to, in a simple way, deliver the daily sur uh, surveys to people and then collect the responses and park them somewhere. And and that somewhere can be anywhere because we're really interested and, and we want to safeguard the privacy. So the Octo team said basically, okay, so why don't we use GitHub private repos for that? So when you set up the Slack bot to work for you, like the good day Slack bot, the first thing it asks you to do is to create a new private GitHub repo and then to invite the good day bot as a collaborator in that um, repo. And that gives it right access. And every time it collects information from you through a, a Slack form, which I will show you, then it just like goes and puts it in, 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 in that repository. So for example, you can see mine is like my handle and good day. That's, that's where all my information goes. Um, and you give it a time of the day. I don't know why I put 5 p.m. because I've never done work at 5 p.m., but okay. Um, and you give it a time of the day that you want it to send you the, the daily ping, so whatever the end of day is for you. And so what that does is that every day at that time, you'll get a ping. Yes, I have today's here, although it's not 5 p.m. because I wanted to demonstrate with today's date. Um, and it gives you this form to, to fill out, especially, essentially. And so you'll see this has all the questions from the survey. And these questions are the questions that we have at the bottom of the blog post. So you all have like access to what those questions are and also the options. And so what I would do is to say, okay, my work day today was awesome because I'm here talking to you um, and everything else. I'm just gonna put random stuff in. And once we're done with all of that, wow, I'm not inspired at all. I feel, no, I feel so excited. Come on. All right, and uh, late afternoon and let's say outside of typical work hours. And I save my responses. And so that, I have my little repo here. It has a CSV where it keeps adding things. And here we are on the 12th of August and it has taken all my, my information. And eventually it will start sending me charts of what's happening on, on my days and what are my patterns for my good days and, and not. Um, and I wanted to show you that because that's just an idea that we're playing with and we're experimenting with um, on how to serve the same thing to more people. But the like the cool thing, like it's easy to have an implementation that does that, that delivers the information, that collects the information and puts it somewhere. Um, but the 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 main effort or the main, I guess, new thing here was what is it that you ask people and how often do you ask them? So it was the mechanics of the um, of the approach. Um, and that's something that is one of my takeaways for everyone here is that this is something that anyone can do. Um, and I mean, literally anyone can do. Um, you need the questions, which you have, and you need a place to collect your information. Sure, it's better to do it with a tool because then you don't have to spend the energy and the time to collect the data. But if you wanted to get started with this today, you could. Um, you can take the questions, you can open, you know, you can write it on your notepad or you can open a spreadsheet and you can start entering the information. Then you rinse and repeat and you do it every day for a while and then you, you go back and you look through the data. So this is something that is absolutely accessible to everyone and very simple to follow. It's a very easy habit to get into. And even if you don't want to do the you know, data collection portion, just take the two minutes, 
that, 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 that is also one of the takeaways that the self-reflection is the key here. That's the key to the success of this. It's that it gets you in a habit of self-reflection and that brings benefit in itself because it makes you aware of things that you were not made aware of before. And you can, you start getting ideas of what to improve um, in your days or what to, to start avoiding in your days. Um, so for me, as I said, if you wanna get started with this today, you can. Um, and that's that's pretty powerful when it comes to thinking about productivity and how to improve your productivity. And it also plays into the last part. Um, I'm a firm believer to like metrics are not an end in the in themselves. They're they're a means to an end, um, and they are used. They are supposed to be used to support um, self improvement, and that's what we did here. So it's important to say what the data and the metrics and everything I showed you today is good for and what it is not good for. I would never use this information or ask anyone to use this information to do any sort of, for example, performance evaluation or performance review or decide whether they're going to you know, give someone a promotion or something like that. It's not meant for that. Um, what it is meant for is for self-improvement, for showing someone how they're doing um, and prompting them to action and finding ideas to self-improve. It is great for that. We found that it definitely works for that and that's the, the best setting for it. That's all I have today. I've put a few resources here on the slide in terms of like the, the paper that talks about space. Then there's uh, Nicole Forsgren has given a talk recently about it so you can find more information about that. Um, and we can do questions. I don't know how much time we have, but whatever time we have is yours. I'm just gonna stop sharing. Yep, we've we've got time for a few more questions. I uh, <laughs> wanna go back a little bit and I've got a, a question from Thomas Sigwald around, uh, if you're working remotely with people in different countries, will that impact the surveys? Do you structure the survey to fit the culture or language? Um, we structured, so, the surveys are for every individual person, right? So it's not, it doesn't really matter if you're working with people in other time zones, you are going to get the survey in your time zone. And the questions that you are asked every day are questions about, did you work with others or did you help others today and so on? But it's based on your view of how much that happened in your day. Um, I'm not sure what other cultural differences we would want to capture here. Um, as the questions are like very specific to like, things that happened that we can't see anywhere else happened in that day. Is there an example yeah. maybe? Uh, I will wait for an example, but I think you, you hit on an important point about the context for the survey and how the results are used. Like, you know, the, the initial reaction is always, you know, okay, we're getting we're getting some data now. How do we use this to measure how we're doing, and what can we do to improve? Whereas it's more of a the value of self reflection and awareness of your own workflows, and uh, kind of making the productivity change from within rather than it yep. being a looking at a scoreboard and saying, okay, we're behind in these areas now. What do we need to do to to uh, affect change? Yeah, I, I see it a little bit as kind of like looking in the mirror um, in the literal sense, like someone like brought a mirror in front of you, like imagine trying to get dressed every day um, and like you have no idea what you look like in the end because you don't you don't have any like feedback on what you look like. It, it, it's obviously an overly simplified example, but the principle is the same. You don't really we're not aware of our patterns until we see them in front of us. We've had people, for example, that said, oh, I thought that I was a morning person, you know, that, that, that I wake up in the morning and that's my most productive time. That's the time that I need to be very defensive about. Um, and then they get the information based on their 10 days of survey. And I was like, oh, I guess late afternoon is the time that I most consistently I'm, feel most productive. Right. And, and that's very powerful to know. You don't know it until you see it in this aggregated way in front of you. And then you can use it right away. Now I know how to structure my day, given that's where my energy is going to go. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Andreas Schmidt has a question that I'm hoping you can unpack a little bit. Uh, it, his question is, how is awesome or a good day defined? Are we talking about the progress that they made or the way that it made them feel emotionally? 
Yes, that's an excellent question. And I think that the, the fact that this is individual to the person takes away some of the pressure of defining good or awesome or any of these characterizations in kind of like a global way. It doesn't matter if my awesome is someone else's good or someone else's bad because I'm only answering questions about myself. So as long as I know what awesome means to me, we're good. Like there's no you know, contamination of the data or anything like that. And it also takes the pressure of trying to define it for everyone, right? Because who am I to say what is an awesome day or is what is an awesome feeling? It is asking for the sentiment. So yes, it's very much based on like the emotional aspect of what did today feel like to you? And then we have all the other questions in the survey that prompt about progress, quality, amount of doing things, and so on. But the, that one question is asking about their emotion, and it's particular to them. And then Felix uh, Muller has uh, a pretty easy question, I think. Um, this is great. Uh, is this Slack bot publicly available already? It's not, public, it? it's not publicly available already because um, it's we're working through a few bugs, then we have to release it to our own engineers at GitHub, and then we would have someone that owns it as a product, or we open sources, which which is the also part of the current thinking. So Shard is the it's a pretty fun idea to play with, um, and we're still experimenting with it, and would love to get it to people. That would be super fun. Yep, we we are still very much learning over here, so it's yep. it's going to take a lot more exploration. Yep. Cool. I think uh, that's enough of questions from our end. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to add, uh, Irini? Not really. It has been awesome to have me here. Um, big fan of demo days. So obviously, I have been. Uh, but it's awesome to be able to have so many people join in, and I hope people got something out of it. Um, yeah, I'm super thank excited. You for having like, me here. Oh, no, thank you. You really raised a lot of curiosity in the chat, and it was awesome to see people really trying to dig in and understand this. And um, it's it's important to point out, like, these are definitely novel notions and ways of thinking about things. And it also involves a lot of overcoming uh, what are kind of our uh, conditioned ways of looking at surveys, data, metrics, productivity, and all that. So I am super looking forward to the replay of the session uh, and uh, hopefully taking a better look at how I look at my own productivity. So thank you for all oh. that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. All right. See you later. Bye. Bye, everyone.